Yeah, a couple of things. A couple of things. Talk to me. If you want to work fewer hours, be an employee. Okay. If you want to work so many hours you can't even count them, be the employer. Okay. See, I think the misconception is, oh, if I start my own company, if I work for myself, I can work fewer hours. No, when you work for yourself, you work way more hours. You're just managing those hours. You're in charge of those hours. Yeah. I was on a phone call two weeks ago with someone and they're going to resign and take a year off and uh, recalibrate their life. They're just going to take a whole year and not work. And, and uh, yeah. That must be nice. And what he kept saying is, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. And Me too, baby. And I know everyone who gave him counsel basically said, hey, take the year, you know, recalibrate. And I said, you don't think I've been tired? <laughs> I said, I, I've been tired my whole journey. And I said, let me, let me tell you the difference between a professional athlete and greatness is that great professional, professional athletes are separated in the fourth quarter. It's what they do when they're tired. That's where greatness emerges. And I've been, I've worked, who, who told you it wasn't supposed to be hard? Who told you that achieving your dreams wasn't supposed to be exhausting? Who told you work wasn't supposed to be work? And, uh, and you, you know, so some of it for me is, I've worked all my life and I love it. And um, people, are you a workaholic? No, because I work for my freedom. I work for my dreams. I work for uh, creative space. I, I work to create opportunities, not just for me, but for other people. And, and we have this culture right now where we hate billionaires. And I think a part of it is that we actually think that people who succeed are intrinsically evil. And so we're working from this mindset that poverty is virtue. And this is something I had to deal with 40 years ago. Because when I was more of an anarchist and a socialist, and I went to work with the urban poor, I had a mindset that the poor were the virtuous and the rich were the evil. And what I had to come to You evil with, now, bro. What? You evil now, sir. Yeah. <laughs> and, you evil now, um, papa. <laughs> I'm not as evil as some because- No, they, <laughs> finish the statement though. I'm, I was just kind of no, writing off your thing. Is that I had to come to grips with the fact yeah. that uh, poverty is not a virtue. It's a condition. Yeah. And there are virtuous people trapped in poverty. Yeah. And also other people who are trapped in poverty because of their decisions and their choices. Right. And that creating wealth doesn't make you intrinsically evil. Good people not only can create wealth, good people should create wealth. And the most important thing that Elon Musk can do is to use the full force of his genius to create billions and billions and billions of dollars of economy so that people can actually have jobs to do what they're gifted at and to live lives that actually are fulfilling for them. I love what Jeff Bezos talks about when people come at him for yeah. being worth like $100 billion. I think that he, you know, his wealth has fluctuated uh, in concordance to the, the, the stock market. But right. at one point, you know, it was like $100 billion. And he's like, what that means to me is that I've made the rest of the world nine hundred billion dollars. Yeah, trillion probably. Yeah, because they, they they said he was the first. Was it? It was the first company to be worth a trillion. No. And I think that he owns sixteen percent of Amazon. Basically, he talks about, you know, I'm worth this much. So if my company's worth this much, I have created this much wealth for this many people because our company has thrived. We've hired tens of thousands of people. We've created this much wealth for people. Ted is spreads across different economies. I'm going, it's that it's a different perspective of going, okay, am I going to be a provider? I'm going to be someone who needs to be provided for. And I do, but I will say this though, because we're in Barcelona. I didn't, you're obviously not an evil person, by the way. You were someone who, who didn't, you didn't have a ton. You weren't, I don't know if you were, I mean, I think there were times of our lives where we definitely maybe were more impoverished than others. I definitely qualified as poor. Right. And for almost a decade, I, I made below welfare. Yeah, yeah. So I definitely qualified. I just didn't, I know you're, I, I know, know, yeah, out of respect, I didn't want to, you know, air out your, your, your dirty laundry. I just so, never considered myself poor because my mindset was not entrapped in a poverty mentality. But for a little bit, it was when you were looking at rich people who were evil and impoverished people who were virtuous, that was, a, that is a poverty mindset. And some of that was connected to 
family and relationships. Okay. Where I felt like, yeah. The, the wealthy people you knew you felt weren't virtuous. Yes. So how do we change the mindset for maybe the next generation of people coming up? Uh, first of all, um, don't give up on work. Uh, it's okay to quit your job. Don't quit on work. And get up in the morning and do something that matters. And in fact, uh, in the scriptures it says, let him who steal, let him who steals steal no longer and do something meaningful with their hands that they may have something to give to those who do not have. And I think the part of the problem is that if you think of income as just what you're supposed to attain to pay for your lifestyle, you don't understand the value of creating wealth. Mm. That what you're supposed to do is create enough wealth where you are generous. And so the solution to evil people who make money is not good people not making money. The solution to evil people making money is good people making more money so they can do more good than those who are evil are doing with their money. If you give up on work, you're going to throw, what's the phrase? You're going to throw the baby out with the bathwater because what you're in danger of is throwing out your intention, throwing out your motivation, throwing out your passions, throwing out your purpose, throwing out your meaning. You cannot get up in the morning without something to give your life to and not drown in depression. Uh, you want to feel anxiety? Start looking back on your life 10 years later and going, for 10 years of my life, I quote, waited to live until I got myself together. And life is not a practice run. You don't get a warm-up game, a pre-game, a practice game. You get one life and you need to live it fully. That was an amazing closing statement. But I'd like to bring it back because we were in Barcelona and you got mad at me because you were like, hey, you're talking about making money too much. Yes. But I would say I'm somewhat virtuous. You are a very good man. I would say I'm a good, good person. You're took, a very generous it some, person. It took some time. I think I'm very generous. You are a very generous person. I've always had a generous person. nature. Even yeah. when I had nothing. I gave what I had to other yeah. people. Um, so why can't I talk about it? No, what I said was that wealth is a great outcome. It's a terrible goal. Because if wealth becomes your goal, whatever wealth you attain, there's always more wealth to attain. So it never, it's never enough. I said, I was like, so there's more goals. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no, focus on what you're supposed to do with your life. Focus on, on your intention. Focus on what you're passionate about. Focus right. on becoming better and better at what you do and let wealth become the outcome of living a life that's really meaningful and never let wealth be more important to you than relationships and people. Because when you look back on your life, it's the people that you did life with that will make you feel really rich. Hmm. I love that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for this episode. If you're listening, go to work. Get to work. And, uh, and if you don't have a job, then make your job getting a job. And, uh, yeah. and if you don't like your job, then have the courage to either go find the job you love or create the job that you love. But don't allow the job you have to be an excuse to move toward apathy and mediocrity and stagnation.